It's new, it's soft, and it's blue. It's the first Windows Phone to feature boom sound from HTC, and it's Sprint's first Windows Phone in over two years. But is it ready for prime time? Let's find out. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is our video review of the HTC 8XT. The only Windows Phone Sprint had ever carried, until recently, was the Arrive, a side-sliding QWERTY smartphone, also from HTC, that made up the entirety of Sprint's original Windows Phone 7 rollout back in March of 2011. The carrier has let its Microsoft collection languish in the intervening years, so the HTC 8XT, with its trimmer, more modern build, has got to be a sight for sore eyes if you're on America's third largest network looking for a Windows Phone. So let's see how it holds up in the usual four categories, hardware, software, camera performance, and a few test notes. One of the most popular viewer comments on our 8XT versus One comparison video was the observation that the 8XT should have been called the 8ST due to its decidedly more mid-range specs. It definitely resembles HTC's earlier 8S more than the 8X, with an off-color stripe highlighting the bottom of the device and a 4.3-inch LCD screen that's not gonna turn any heads with its WVGA resolution. 216 pixels per inch isn't bad, necessarily, especially not on Windows Phone, but it definitely isn't crisp enough to hold up next to the higher resolution screens of the 8X or Lumia 1020, and its colors really wash out at certain angles. It's a pretty unremarkable panel, which is a shame because the device surrounding it feels wonderful in the hand. The soft touch paint job comes in only one available color on Sprint, California Blue and it looks terrific. The curved back nests nicely in your palm. The phone's 9.9 millimeter thickness is a perfect match for its 140 gram mass. It's just beautiful. The HTC branding is minimal and perfectly set off by the phone's design. The buttons are where we expect them to be, and the camera bezel, though a little alien looking, bears an attractive steel finish. The phone really is stunning, and it's easy to see why HTC has won its share of design awards. Down in engineering, things are a little more commonplace. Powering everything is a dual-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 400 running at 1.4 GHz and helped along by a gig of RAM and a paltry 8 gigs of storage, only 5.5 of which are available to the user on first boot. Thankfully, there's microSD expansion here for media, but the same can't be said for the 1800 mAh LiPo battery, which is embedded. Otherwise, it's a pretty tame cocktail of Bluetooth 4.0, Wi-Fi ABGNN, NFC, and radios for Sprint's 3G CDMA and 4G LTE. There's nothing terribly special about this phone's spec load. Here's where we normally follow that up by reminding you that Windows Phone is a very consistent and responsive platform, no matter what specs it's running on. Well, that is indeed normally true, but not, sadly, on the 8XT. Frankly, this phone has some significant performance issues. To begin with, doing anything while there's a music streaming app playing in the background is a virtual guarantee of lag and stutter. Try streaming anything from Pandora or Spotify over cellular, even over LTE, and then spend a few minutes in Twitter or the People Hub or anywhere. Not only will the audio start breaking up with pops and clicks as though it's an old AM radio, but the phone's UI slows to a crawl too, with animations grinding to a skittering halt and key presses not always logging correctly. It seems to happen irrespective of what media app you're using, whether you're on headphones or speakers, and whether Beats is enabled or not. Sometimes it happens when you're not even playing music at all. The phone will just bog down for no apparent reason, only to then go on behaving normally for a few minutes before doing it again. While that's the most serious issue, it's sadly not the only one. We've also run into problems on phone calls. We'll save you the jump down to test notes and just tell you here that phone call performance itself is only so-so to begin with. On both sides, callers said we sounded just okay, and to us, people came through plenty loud, but muffled. But that's not the issue. The problem is that the 8XT periodically turns the screen on while you're talking for no reason, causing your cheek to trigger the speakerphone or conference call toggles, or even hit the end call key. If these sound like the kind of issues found on a defective phone, we thought so too. So we reached out to HTC for a replacement demo unit, and to their credit, the company immediately sent one over. But the new phone bears the same exact set of problems. 
It seems pretty clear the 8XT's software, which is the production release packing GDR2, is pretty seriously undercooked. This phone is desperately in need of an update to correct these issues because as of now, it's easily the least enjoyable Windows Phone 8 experience we've ever had. It's possible some of those bugs are coming from HTC's heavier-than-usual customization of Windows Phone, which in some areas is actually quite welcome. The camera is a big one. The 8XT packs a fairly typical 8-megapixel BSI sensor around back, but it's the software that makes it stand out from other Windows Phone shooters. The viewfinder is essentially a Windowsification of HTC's awesome viewfinder from the One, with many customization options, filters, and special shooting modes like HDR, along with HTC's time-saving persistent double shutter keys for stills and video. That quick-draw video trigger helped us capture this rapidly passing train, something we wouldn't have been quick enough to snag had we been using the standard Windows Phone viewfinder. The video itself is quite nice as well, as you can see here, and in our separate 1080p sample uploaded to YouTube, and the still image results are quite nice as well. Colors are typically nice and rich, and with enough light, the camera can deliver some pretty fine results outdoors, especially if you make use of the various shooting modes available, and maybe fiddle with a filter or two here and there, just for fun. Indoors, pictures are a little less impressive, sometimes overexposed, with edges a little blurrier and colors a little more washed out. A deluxe edition camera, this is not. But for the typical smartphone user, it should do fine. The front-facing camera, a 1.6 megapixel unit, is, as usual, nothing to write home about. The 8XT performed well in terms of reception, keeping pace with the Sprint HTC One as we darted to and fro across Boston over the course of five days. Throughput was pretty inconsistent on LTE, though, jumping from download highs in the low 20 megabits around midnight to comparatively sluggish 2 megabit speeds around rush hour, and everywhere in between. One of the halo features of the 8XT is boom sound, HTC's forward-firing speakers paired with Beats Audio, the first time such a combination has ever been seen on Windows Phone. And it works brilliantly. Space is vast, Captain. I'm sure you're aware that only one out of every 43,000 planets supports intelligent life. Sound is loud and clear, with quite a bit of bass, and almost no distortion, even at maximum volume. If the screen were a bit bigger, this would make the perfect phone to take in a movie on Netflix, but even as it is, it's a very enjoyable viewing experience, thanks to those speakers. And audio performance over the included earbuds is quite nice as well, including FM radio listening, which we found surprisingly static-free. Just keep an eye on your battery when you're blasting that media, though. The lower capacity pack does indeed result in a pretty spare runtime. With heavy use, we ran the thing dry in quite a bit less than a day, and the phone's battery scored lower in the WP Bench exhaustion test than most other devices. More impressions in our full written review at Pocket Now. The Windows Phone ecosystem has been growing steadily, and we were happy to see Nokia's Here Suite, which is a huge value add, as HTC has yet to match Nokia's custom titles in volume or in usefulness. That said, HTC's custom hub adds some nice flair to the home screen, provides a convenient shortcut to news, weather, and stocks, in addition to an instant visual distinction from other Windows phones. Of course, there's the usual Sprint bloatware here too, which you'll find either useful or, if not, at least easy to uninstall. We want to like the 8XT as much as any other mid-range Windows phone. We really, really do. Its hardware is beautiful, its camera software is fun, and its boom sound implementation is even better than on the HTC One. But its software just doesn't measure up. Now, is the 8XT the first phone we've encountered with a laggy or buggy UI? No, absolutely not. But we've come to expect a minimum standard from Windows Phone. If nothing else, you can usually count on phones running the platform to at least be snappy and mostly reliable, regardless of their specs. So the 8XT's failure to deliver in that area is jarring. And frankly, it's a big surprise coming from the same people who made the excellent Sense suite for the HTC One. Now, can you live with the 8XT in its current form? Probably, if you keep all your music hosted locally and don't mind occasionally putting your calls on speakerphone by accident, but those are sacrifices you shouldn't have to make, 
especially on Sprint's first new Windows phone in over two years. A software update would fix all this, and we hope it does, but we have no way of knowing when HTC will get around to that. If it happens, we'll update our written review at Pocket Now. For now, if you're married to Sprint and dead set on Windows Phone, the 8XT is your only option, and you can get it for 99 bucks on contract through Sprint, or at much lower prices down to even a penny at third-party retailers. If you're dying for a Windows Phone 8 device and you're open to switching carriers, though, there are many other, better Windows phones out there that deliver a much more polished experience. We give the HTC 8XT a 6.5 out of 10. Hope you enjoyed our video review of the HTC 8XT, folks. The written review will be available at Pocket Now, pocketnow.com, no later than August 2nd. So check that out for more detailed information. Before you go, please toss us a like if you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below if you have some feedback, which we are sure you do. And follow us on social media so you don't miss future reviews and mobile coverage from Pocket Now. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.